Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a close look on the Jumper X73S from Ishin. This is the upgraded version of the X73 which I've already reviewed. So let's open the box and see what we're getting inside. So we're not getting much, we're only getting the quadcopter, a USB adapter. This is going to connect, allow us to connect it to Clean Flight or Beta Flight. We're getting the quadcopter and this protective frame. That's it. They didn't include any batteries or spare propellers, so make sure to buy your own battery. This one runs on 1S battery. And do yourself a favor and buy some extra propellers. I haven't done it, but I have a couple of extra from other brushless quadcopters. So I will include a link in the description as well. It runs on a 10,000 kV motors that are interestingly placed on the bottom of the quadcopter. I hope it won't be a downside because when you hit the ground you might ruin one of these motors. The ECs are soldered to the frame. You can see we have four ESCs here. These are 3.5 ampere ESCs. The camera is 600 TVL camera and the integrated video transmitter is 25 milliwatt and it feels much much better than the X73 because the camera mount was very fragile so each time you crashed it, it would just be removed from the quadcopter so this one feels much better. On the bottom we have the placement for the battery. The recommended LiPo battery is 600 milliampere hour and the connector is this type of connectors you can see here. On the left side we have this connector that allows us to connect the quadcopter to a USB port in order to configure it. This is the bind button. My version is the FR Sky compatible version. Over here we have the boot button. I really like these boot buttons over the need to short to boot pads. I think this is much much easier so you this one will put this board into a DFU mode so you can flash new versions. The weight of this quadcopter without the battery is 30.80 grams. For example, this is my new newly beat Pico X. It weighs 50 grams. So this is lighter. But this is all and also runs on 1S battery and this one runs on 2S battery. These propellers are 46.6 millimeter in length and this frame thickness is 1.7 millimeters. There is no built-in buzzer in this quadcopter and as far as I know you won't be able to add one. I think they should have put also a buzzer port so you can just put a small buzzer so in case you lose it you will be able to use it in order to locate the quadcopter. As you can see the tilt angle of the camera is very limited. You won't be able to tilt. This is the highest as you can get, I think it probably should be enough. You have to remember this is a pretty slow indoor flyer, so you're not gonna take it outside and run it in the crazy angle, so probably this is going to be enough. Adding the propeller guards is done by just removing the motors, and then you will have to insert it in this manner. I don't think I'm gonna bother with it, I'm just gonna fly it without it. The weight of this propeller guard is 2.34 grams, and it feels like it's not going to break that easily. You can bend it and it's pretty twistable, so it seems like they did a pretty nice job with this propeller guard, but I decided not to use it. In order to set up the band and the frequency, we have these jumpers here. Because there is no instruction included, I'm going to take a picture of the relevant band, so let's have a look. So these are the bands, this is the channel. So I'm gonna put it on FedShock 7, so it's 5860, so the S4 and the S5 going to be on, S3 on, and S2 on, and S1 is going to be off. So the only one is going to be off is the S1. The S6, as far as I know, is not in use. So the S1 is the only one that has to be off, so I will just have to put it here. And now it should be on FedShock 7. Now these wires on the bottom look a bit fragile, so I've decided to put some tape on it in order to protect it. So now I think it's a little bit more protected. And one more thing, I'm going to put some tape here 
on this IPX connector because if it get, will get detached on a crash, it might burn the transmitter. So now it's a little bit more protected as well. The FRSC antenna is also secured with this tape. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bind it to my Taranis. In order to bind it, you will have you put your Taranis on. The mode is going to be D8, channel 1 to 8. Hit the bind button, you will hear this sound. And then just insert the battery while holding this button here. Now it's supposed to be bind. I'm going to connect it to the clean flight in order to see that it has been properly bind. So I've successfully connected it to on clean flight. You have to use this USB cable. I had some problem with the newest uh, version of uh, Sierra OS. It didn't work with this driver, so it's kind of crashed the, the OS each time I connected it, so I fixed it. I will put a link to the driver in the description as well. And actually it worked on the first go. You can see that it's working. So let me quickly guide you through the basic settings. These are the stock settings. So we do get RSSI with this receiver. So this is a nice feature to have. So even though there is no buzzer, it will also help you find it in the grass or whatever. And I also configured this switch to turn these LEDs. So it turns the beeper and then it will also help us to find it if it get lost in a dark place. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to take it for a test flight. Hope you enjoy this video.